When I saw it leaked, I kind of just thought the song was done for. Like, I didn't think it'd have a chance to, like, get the views that it did. I would just get links sent by people. They're like, bro, what's this? And it'd say, like, Little Mozart and have, like, some just terrible cover on it that says Blueberry Fago. And I was like, this is getting millions of views. But TikTok started going crazy, and then we started seeing the numbers go up. And then that's when we knew we had something. Damn. It's all really about having connections. Like if you want to get placements, you got to link up with people in your town and start building from there. My friend Brennan, who's an engineer, he made connections with Mosey and Mosey's camp. When Mosey and Brennan asked for a beat pack, I kind of just sent all West Coast beats. And I guess the first beat off that pack was the Blueberry Fago beat. The day that I was working on the Fago beat, literally what I did, I went on YouTube and looked up 90s baby making music. I was like, what do you call like that slow ballad like music with the 80s vibes to it? And like the best guess I had was baby making music. Johnny Gill's voice was deep enough where I knew that I could pitch it up without it kind of distorting it. Off the rip, like if you listen to the sample, you'll hear like a Kenny G solo in the beginning. And I was like, that's too smooth not to use. Like, let me just take that real quick. The sax just came in real nice, you know, just real smooth and jazzy. I was a band kid, to be honest. Like I was doing concert band, orchestra, where I was able to like learn all these different percussion instruments. When I first listened to the song, I could tell right away that it was a 2-5-1 chord progression. Got on the keys, found the best way that I wanted to play that, added that, quantized it. And then when I played it with the sample, it just lined up perfectly. The next sound is just the claps on 2 and 4. I added a little clap roll at the end just to kind of give it more of a punctuation at the end of the phrase. After I added the claps, I just added some basic hi-hats to it. That just kind of drove the bounce of the beat and kind of gives the beat a focal point. When you leave space in the hi-hats, like that's an indication for them, okay, I could go a little bit crazier on the flow right here. And then when the hi-hats are busier, like that's more of an indication to leave space. Once I added the open hat on top of the regular hats, I got this. With my background playing an actual drum set, it's just more natural for me to start with the kick drum. And then the 808 is more like a bass line. The 808 I used is the Spins 808. Producers that are watching this, you guys know what I'm talking about. It just hits different. At this point, once I kind of had the core foundation of the beat, now it's just a matter of adding like extra ear candy and perks. So I added like a rim, a conga, and some shakers. And all three of them together sounds like this. I still felt like it needed something more. So I went through one of my drum kits and I found this weird tape swell and I just put it on like the root note and it just fit perfectly. It was really just lucky, but it came out sounding like this. I had the kicks, I had all the drums down, I had a melody that kind of sat nice under the sample, but I still didn't have like a high-end melody. Once I heard that on top of everything, I knew the beat was done. I was like, if I had any more, it's gonna be too much. Let's just call it a rap here. Straight to the bag, I'm that nigga, huh? Got me some gas, rolling us some cash. Yeah, I got me some. I ain't fussed yesterday, I'ma fuck some. The first time I heard the song, like I was texting Brennan back and forth, and he's like, yo, we got one. Immediately, instead of listening to it on my phone, I go straight to my room where the studio monitors are. I just crank that all the way up and just start gigging because that was really like a dream come true for me for like a long time. A couple of days after the song was dropped, one of my friends sent me a Rolling Stone article and uh, you scroll down and Johnny Gill is saying, yo, this is fire, like I like this. So to me, that was like the highest level compliment. I started out making trash, not gonna lie, but eventually like, you know, I started getting the sound I wanted, like the ideas I had in my head, I started translating that onto there. One thing led to another, and now we got Fago. I just went back to my city, and you know they all fucking with me.
but it ain't safe pose with me. I'ma chase bands to the enemy. All right, so like I'ma play my original tag right here. Damn, Kelly, you can't go on. Shout out Tezzy G's up from Florida. Appreciate you, bro. So I took that, just cut the damn Callen, and so then when you combine that with the record scratch, you end up getting this. Damn, Kelly. Damn, Kelly. In Kamikaze, that song, they used the record scratch. So I was trying to use that same vibe or kind of make it a continuation off that. 